I'm Mark Kelly and Mr. Saltwater Tank coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. When I think tank automation, I think processes that make my tank more stable and processes that happen automatically in the background. Processes that happen automatically in the background get done consistently and processes that happen consistently lead the tank stability. The most widely used tank automation process is also the one that has the most effect on your tank stability. That process is the topping off of your tank. Topping off your tank's water is done manually or through an auto top off system, aka ATO. Note that while you can top off your tank manually, this is a show about tank automation and making your life easier. Here is some interesting information we recently discovered. When you top off your tank manually, your alkalinity can take a big drop. This drop is due to fresh water having a neutral pH compared to salt water. The lower pH means the alkalinity component of your tank's water has to buffer the incoming low pH fresh water which drops your alkalinity. We noticed this on the budget reef tank. Topping off the tank by hand dropped the alkalinity by half a dKH or more in a very short amount of time. Not what your reef tank wants. Make your life easier and your tank more stable. Use an ATO. An ATO replaces the water that evaporates out of your tank. A very important point to remember and one that is vital to the health of your saltwater tank is that the water replaced by the ATO has to be fresh water. You're running a saltwater tank, so why are you pumping fresh water into your system? You use fresh water to top off your saltwater tank because only water evaporates out of your tank, not the salt. The water leaves, but the salt is left behind, which raises the salinity of the water in your tank. Eventually, the salinity can get so high that it's toxic to the fish and the coral in your tank. Therefore, you need to replace that water with fresh water. You'd be surprised how many people don't know that they need to top off their saltwater tanks with fresh water. The parts of an ATO are straightforward. There's a water level sensor that sits in your tank or your sump, depending on where the lowest part of your system lies. For those of you with a sump, the water level sensor is placed in the return box chamber, as this chamber has a varying water level. Unless the water level drops in the chamber, the water level sensors will never get out of the water and your tank won't get topped off. The water level sensor is connected to a control box, which is connected to a power source and a top off pump. Note that a properly designed ATO system includes a top off reservoir where fresh water, preferably RODI water, is kept. Here's a pro tip for you. One of the biggest mistakes I see is to plumb the RODI unit directly into the sump or the tank with a float valve. The problem here is your RODI unit is stupid. All it knows how to do is to make water and make water and make water. When the float valve fails, it lets the RODI unit make water endlessly. What happens next is your sump or your tank overflows and creates a flood. And then if you don't catch it fast enough, your saltwater tank becomes a freshwater tank because of all the RODI water that's being pumped into it. I've lost count how many times people have told me when they were new and they didn't know better, they plumbed their RODI unit into their sump with a float valve, and the float valve failed, and then it flooded their house. Case in point is a consulting client of mine, when he was new and didn't know better, he plumbed his RODI unit directly into his sump. His float valve failed, and it flooded his basement with 25,000 gallons of RODI water. He came home and he had several feet of water standing in his basement, and of course his tank was ruined as well. Now, how does he know that it was 25,000 gallons worth of water? Because he got the water bill for it. If you plumbed your RODI unit directly into your sump or your tank with a float valve, save yourself before it's too late. Get yourself a real ATO and avoid the disaster. Look, just because the disaster hasn't struck doesn't mean that it won't. Since redundancy on tank automation systems are important, I only choose ATOs that have built-in redundancy. For ATO systems, these redundancies come in the form of two water level sensors, a timer that only lets your ATO run for so many minutes, or a shutoff valve on the water line from the ATO pump. All these help prevent a free-running ATO pump that can overfill your tank or your sump. ATO systems I've used include the Tunzi Osmolator, the Duetto Dual Sensor ATO System, and the Neptune Systems ATK Kit. The Duetto Dual ATO system is on the budget end of the spectrum, yet it still has two water level sensors. It also has some intelligence built in and only lets the ATO pump run based on how long it took to first top off your tank. Moving up the value and cost scale is the Tunzi Osmolator, which has two water level sensors and a built in timer that only lets the ATO pump run for 10 minutes. It also has an audible alarm in case the upper water level sensor is tripped. I used the Tunzi Osmolator for years and it worked great. Now I use the Neptune Systems ATK for my tank and my client's tanks and here's why. The main reason that I switched the Neptune Systems ATK is your remote monitoring and control of the system. Wherever I am in the world where I have an internet connection, 
I can go into my client systems and make sure that the ATO pump is running. Contrast this with having to call the client, make sure they're home and say, hey, is the water level at the same place in your sump? No matter what time of day it is, as long as I've got an internet connection, I can reach out, I can check on my client's tanks, and if something goes wrong, I can control it from wherever I am. The Osmolator works great, it still works great. For me, I just need an advanced level of control and transparency. Like any piece of equipment, regular maintenance will keep your ATO system running properly. Once a month, clean the water level sensors, and once a month, check the redundancy on your ATO. Easy way to check the redundancy is to submerge both water level sensors and make sure that the ATO cuts off. A little bit of prevention goes a long way. I'm Mark Kelly and Mr. Saltwater Tank coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. I'll catch you in the next episode.